Thank you for joining us on Worldwide Slot Car Chat on Zoom, episode 144. I'm your host, Greg Gow. The gang's all here. We got Big Dan and Mike and Luff and Owner <laughs> and Paul and Don and Dewan and Gio and uh, Jim and Garth and Alan and Marty and J-Rod and other people, and we're going to talk slot cars. Uh, since I don't know of any presentations that we're going to start off with, let's start off with show and tell. So if you have an item that you would like to show and or tell, regardless of what it is. Uh, now's the time to raise your hand. Paul, did you want to go first? Yeah, don't forget to unmute. Go on in. There you go. Right. Well, I've just finished um, a white kit for one of my friends. And it's uh, the, so it's, I know it never ran in this livery. So anyone out there says, oh, it didn't run like that. It was a copy of the um, team car we'd done for the Can-Am. So we had to have a pair of them. And they even painted it. It's a, it's, I've just got to get the wheel inserts, but I can't get them at the moment because Pendles ain't got them. But that's that one. The other thing was me SCX to a DTM car, which I changed out and put a, a Marto chassis underneath it. And that goes like stink. There's no added weight to that yet, so and that's running nicely. Wasn't wasn't uh, oh, pre- wasn't Wayne looking for an SCX DTM chassis a while ago, or was that you? No. Somebody somebody no, was running me. an SCX series, and and they could only use a stock SCX chassis. So keep hold of that chassis. <laughs> Wayne might want it. <laughs> yeah. Well, he can get one off Angelo. There you go. <laughs> I've got a lovely little present in the post. What a beautiful car. And Greg. Yeah. Which is now going to be, it's now come to the top of the list. So that'll be starting on. My granddaughter says, thank you very much for the little slot car controllers that you printed with her name on. And I've been building 10 foot of balsa, (laughs) good wood fencing for my track, which has got to be now painted white. Uh, I've done two sections in white already, but yeah, it's going to have the um, sewing pins pushed through there, either side of that that cut line, because that looks like bolts that hold it all together. Yeah. That is it. I've done, I drilled the holes in the bottom because I'm going to put pins in, uh, nails in, uh, panel pins into the track and into the bottom. So if any it's it, it ain't coming apart. The car will, but that won't. Nice. Definitely. That's my little... Once you get those on your track, you definitely got to show that off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be another picture to put up. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. All right. Thanks for sharing, Paul. And Big Den has got his hand up. Go ahead, Big Den. Okay. A um, couple of, two or three shows ago, I may have mentioned that I was um, been you know sort of been in contact with a, a, a vendor in Spain, a mini racing studios, and my main aim was to get a couple of three D printed chassis for um, Maninko Mosler and Ferrari three hundred and sixty, also some wings for the um, uh, the the other uh, Maninko DTM cars. Now I'm, I'm my shares on the screen. Yep, okay. Uh, they arrived in the mail yesterday morning, uh, probably just a three and a bit weeks from Spain. And uh, yeah, one of the things I like dealing with this guy is he went out of his way to make me up a special part number to bulk all the parts together. So I only paid one postage rate and, um, and they're quite affordable. I mean, some Spanish companies, they start at 40 bucks Australian for, for postage. And that's just a bit, you know, this guy was about $15 all up for the five items. So I, I was really happy about that one. So just a bit of a, there's the, um, that's the bottom view of the Mosler chassis. Um, quite a good finish. Um, I've just started bolting a, a slotted angle winder pod in. So I'm probably going to, you know, uh, re, uh, relieve the holes out a bit. They like, they're a bit tight at the moment with the screws there, but that's to be expected. Uh, but as I said, quite, quite a, quite a good finish. Um, uh, there's the top view of it. And we move on to the, the um, what was the other one I said? The Ferrari, yep, Ferrari. 
it's got that like speckly little finish, but it's not, you know, not it's, it probably looks worse on on the pictures here than what it does in real life. And that's just a top view of the of the chassis. Um, one other thing I haven't got a picture of, I uh, again, I may have mentioned that I, I melted my slotted DTM chassis by using a, a volatile glue on it, you know, and uh, it just tw twisted the warp the chassis no end. I got a replacement chassis from, um, you know, a local dealer. It looks like slotted are going with the ground effects theory because it definitely had an aerofoil section on the bottom of it. It was that bent, you know, it was just, it was just like the, yeah, the bottom of an aeroplane wing. So I don't know whether, that, <laughs> but um, I was just, yeah, struggling to get the, you know, the clearance that the guys in Hobart require. So I might have to go for bigger tires or something, which in itself isn't easy because there's not a lot of room in the wheel wells to, to take bigger tires. So, and that's just about it for the share. I don't think there's anything more. Next pictures are just the, yeah, no, okay. So I'll stop the share there and um, pop over to the next lucky shooter. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Those prints look great from here. You know, I could, I could tell that they were uh, filament prints on a textured sheet. And those, that texture always looks nice on a print. Uh, All righty. Thanks, Big Den. And Don, are you ready to go? Sure. Take it away. Well, I haven't shared anything in a while, but uh, I want you all to know that I'm still uh, still doing stuff. <laughs> Are you still there? Yeah, still oh. still getting junk. Oh. <laughs> That's a recent acquisition there. That was fun sorting through. And mm -hmm. there's actually a lot of really good tires in there and a lot of nifty wheels. Another box of really nice bits and pieces. <laughs> uh, these were pretty nice. Uh, you can get a pair of these for $10 and they're perfect replacements for any of the Revell 16Ds or type motors. And just some more junk that I have gotten. Um, yeah, that didn't look like junk. That looks pretty, <laughs> that looked pretty good. That's just like an old Ravel Mercedes, yeah. Where's the one? Was. He'll be interested. <laughs> but I, I do buy some new stuff every once in a while too. So yeah. Oh. I'm gonna take a go stuff. with one yeah. of these. <laughs> yeah. And then this is gonna be a bit of a challenge. I was laughing because it said no soldering until I actually got it and read the directions, but uh, <laughs> This ought to be interesting. It's just a bunch of individual pieces of brass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's awesome. That's how some of those kits were, just a packet of parts. Yeah. <clears throat> but that's all I got. All right. Well, thanks for sharing. And it looks like Jim is ready to go. Go ahead, Jim. Good morning, everybody. Um, I am the proud owner of a brand new soldering iron. Ah. Not Finally. <laughs> it took forever, didn't it? <laughs> Not quite coming through. No, it it, uh, it got here uh, in a reasonable amount of time, I think. Um, so thank you, Greg. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Uh, ironically, my soldering iron just kind of conked out right before that contest. So that's why I decided <laughs> to do the soldering iron. And uh, so that's going to work very well for me. Awesome. Um, the other thing I've got is I've got a new car. And um, oops, something. And there, we go. there we go. Um, at the last GT3 race, GT3 has become a pretty big class for us now. It's it's been very successful the last race, couple races. And uh, the last race, my McLaren was um, taken by a friend of mine, and he finished second with it. So he bought it on the spot. 
So I decided to build another one. And I decided to start from scratch. And because NSR does not have a whole lot of liveries out there, uh, I decided to go with a, uh, a, a quote, yellow slash white kit. And this was what I got. Uh, the intent was to do this car with the Adelaide decals. Uh, when I got the decals and started to put the car together, I realized I didn't have any orange paint. So I decided that red would look better. And so I, the, my intent was never to build a exact duplicate of this, but just use the decals and make a nice looking car. So I did red instead. And uh, this is the final result. Oh, Came okay. out, I think it came right. out really nice. The The only issues that I had with the decals is, you know, those decals look very dark burgundy and they're supposed to be bright blue. And they just, you, and there's just, I don't think there's any way you could back those with white in just that area. Um, so I wasn't unhappy with the decals, but this color was definitely not the blue one you put it on a, on a, under, uh, over the red. Uh, if you put it over white, it would be fine, but then you, then you have a white car. So um, the blue is more like, you see the blue in the very right, just past the A, mm -hmm. where it, it's backed in white on the decal. Mm -hmm. and that's what it should be or close to that. I think the actual car is a chrome blue, so that would be virtually impossible to duplicate. But yeah, it's just turned out to be a dark blue, almost burgundy uh, when you got it on the car. But car came out good, I thought. I used uh, NSR... Uh, wheel inserts which are not the stock ones but i've always liked just five spoke and my friend of mine friend of mine said yeah you've got a mclaren with 1970s porsche wheel inserts on it <laughs> so be it i think they look as good or better than the stock wheel inserts and uh, there's only a couple of inserts from nsr anyway so that's the car a couple detail shots <clears throat> one thing that i use i've been using some of my other cars that works really well is there's to me a use it has a color called nato black and n-a-h n-a-t-o like you know the the war stuff and it's kind of a dull off black and it looks really good i think on some of these detail parts on on the race cars like radiators and the, the rear ducting instead of a gloss black so uh it was a pain to do i'm not a big decal person but that one decal on the side is one decal one big decal from the back all the way to the front and so about 20 minutes and a lot of microsol later it, it laid down pretty flat so I, I was other than that one little issue with the color. I was very happy with the with the decal set. Um, this is obviously a race car, so here's the what I've done to it, starting with the uh, the super hard chassis or the extra hard chassis, whatever they call that. Uh, I did replace the 17 inch wheels and tires with 16 inch or 16 millimeter wheels and tires. Uh, we are allowing, as of now, we're allowing F1 size wheels on the back. But we did some testing, and these are actually as fast or faster with the 16 millimeter wheels on it. Good. So they do look a little bit better. I, I, I get the fact that the F1 wheels don't look at all good on the on the back in proportion. <clears throat> the one big thing I did on this car is we're doing axle tubes pretty much on all of our cars. Uh, <clears throat> we've also instituted a ride height limit of 32 thousands on the chassis, Good. and and or. 20 thousandths on the gear so if you've got a sidewinder car where the gear sits below the chassis the gear only has to clear by 20 but the chassis still has to clear by 32. taking that into account the racer sideways cars the gear sits level or above the chassis so you can drop the car down to 32. so on this car i used offset bushings 5.5 millimeter offset bushings and installed an axle tube and with the axle tubes with 0.5 millimeter, if you use the standard aluminum tubing, it rubs on the axle. So I had to use tubing that was as big as the outer diameter of the flange. And so that worked fine. And so the car went together. Uh, some of the guys down in LA are using the uh, uh, the uh, set screw pinions, which I like better, much easier to adjust and easier to, to change gears if you need to do that. I was that. just gonna ask about that. <laughs> yeah, that's a slotting plus pinion. That's a seven and a half mil, for the NSR, I think the six and a half mil on the uh, racer sideways. So that's a 12 tooth pinion on that car. And the, going from a 13 to a 12 really mellows these uh, angle winder, you know, the long can motors down. So they're much more drivable. And so you can be able to play with the gears and not having to worry about it as far as taking the motor out and unpressing and repressing and so forth. The slotting plus pinions are just 
you know, much, much easier to work with. So mm -hmm. those are the major things that I did with a carb, uh, uh, besides the uh, slot invasion guide and the, the uh, green hard extra hard chassis. So that's the car. It was uh, under the track record yesterday at uh, the, one of the small tracks we ran on. Looking forward to getting it on the track for uh, this weekend at Motown. Uh, we're racing every first Saturday at Motown through June, but this weekend, I, I don't know if, um, I wasn't here last week, uh, but I don't know if it was mentioned that we lost a racer. Robert Silva was was killed um, in a accident. Uh, there was some fighting and liquor involved. So it's, it was in the newspaper in Fresno. Great guy, Robert Silva. Um, I don't know if Dennis mentioned it or not, but for that reason, we're moving, he's, we're having a memorial service or not we, but they're having, his family's having a memorial service on Saturday. So we're postponing our race this weekend to Sunday. And there is a GoFundMe page. Uh, if anybody's interested, I can put that up. Uh, Robert was 57 years old, leaves behind a couple kids, a couple grandkids and just, devastating you know, i don't know dennis did you talk about that at all no no it, it just devastating um so he was a he raced with us at norcal he was from fresno which is about halfway between sacramento and la he raced with the la guys all the time and he's been racing with us in, in modesto so you know hearts go out to his family and kids and so forth so, and he always brought his daughter to the race his daughter mm -hmm. i guess his daughter was like eight or nine ten i think ten but he always brought her to the race. And so it was, like I said, it was just devastating news, but. Yeah. Go ahead and put the GoFundMe link in the chat and I'll put it. Yeah, I will. And let me, let me <clears throat> without being commercial, the GoFundMe link, you know, you can see who's donated. Mm -hmm. Electric Dream stepped up with a thousand dollar donation. Nice. Hats off to, to those guys. Yeah. That's it for me. All right. Well, thank you very much for sharing. Oh, I meant to ask, um, what adhesive do you use for the rear bushings on that car? Um, <clears throat> if I get it perfectly in place, I'll use uh, some special super glue that we've got. Uh, but right now I'm using just E6000 so I can I can take it out and move it if I have to. Yeah. And so I'm probably going to use E6000 because those eccentric bushings, if they get bumped, then it gets out of alignment. So with uh, super glue, then I kind of have to destroy the, the 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 motor pod to get the bushings out so uh i'm, I'm probably just going to stay with the e6000 because it seems to work fine all right thank you for that and I have a question. So, go ahead um, Norman. are you have you ever experienced any um um imbalances or counterbalances with that uh the opinion with the the, the uh, grub screw on it zero yeah I don't think these motors turn in there. There, there are two set screw holes in it. So if you want to, you can put one on each side. I don't. Uh, I don't. I, do. I don't think it's a good thing. You do. Mm -hmm. um, I saw so the, it, as well. Yeah. I so there are two too. holes in it if you want to do that. Yeah. yeah you got to be careful with two holes though, because uh, you can very easily, if you tighten them wrong, you very easily loosen it rather than tightening it. And that, that's why I don't do it. But So you, you know. tighten one up and you run the other one up until it's just just tight enough that it doesn't come loose if you want to maintain the balance. But if you tighten both of them up tight, you're going to lose it. It'll, it'll come loose. Good to know. Okay. You can always, you can always uh, lock tight the one that's... Not. Yeah, you could always lock tight one in. Yeah. All right. Good deal. Any other questions? All righty, looks like we're done with Jim. And Alan, you're next, sir. All right, okay, so I don't I don't remember if I ever mentioned this, but I'm now starting to float with brass chassis and steel chassis racing. I don't know if I showed you guys this. This is an Iola chassis that I put together. I think I did show this on one of the, work, the slot chats maybe about uh, two months ago. Yeah. And uh, it's a real education. I mean, it's gone together. And with some help, it's, you know, it's now it's flying. I'm really happy with it. But these are much more uh, reminiscent of the 12th scale uh, circuit racer radio control type things with the legs and bodies and everything. And the, the motors kind of look more like it. Um, and these motors are really, really, really hard. They're really not cheap. Uh, and they kick like hell. You know, they don't spin that, that fast, but they're really, really, really talky. Which so one are you using, Alan? Uh, Which motor is, is it? One. 
you'd be able to read that, I think. Uh, no, I can't read it. Yeah, I can't read that. Nope. It says made in China. <laughs> and it says, if it uh, is, oh, is that a ni an M9 or is it an MB? Hold on a second. I should be able to read it. It is a 9BB. 9BB. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's the JK uh, Hawk 9 double ball bearing yeah. motor. Yes. And that's a, a really notchy, uh, high performance motor. I was so, I mean, first build. Uh, 70,000 RPM, somewhere around there, I would think. Yeah. For a first build, it's working really well. I mean, and I, the, the first car I got was I borrowed this chassis from one of the races down at uh, London Finchley, and I put my own body on it, and that was okay. So, you know, I'm getting there. The next car to build is what they call saloon class. And again, <laughs> it's uh, Lexan <laughs> chassis, Lexan sorry, Lexan body. Uh, javelin jk javelin body um and uh perplexingly i didn't really realize but the wheels come in different sizes and you really have to get the right size for the chassis and we're only talking a tenth uh sorry maybe i don't know a millimeter or something different if you've got the wrong ones they're not uh, they're not the right thing and they just don't work so this worked quite well uh, but then I found that the front wheels weren't really touching the track, and one of the guys helped me out with that and got me some thinner braids because I think the, the standard braids are quite, quite, quite thick compared to 132 braids. These things are like wire brushes; they're heavy yeah. duty, uh, and they raise the chassis up quite a lot. So I've been quite lucky in that I got I, bought, I borrowed a chassis again. Somebody lent me this one. So at some point, I have to try and replicate something like this in my own, on my own with the necessary parts. But I got the chassis, bought all the parts, put it all together myself, and uh, everything worked really well. Apart from the same failing, I failed to solder the pinion on properly, and the pinion popped. But that's okay, because in an inline configuration, you don't lose the pinion. You know, it doesn't go flying across the room. So I just lost all drive, and that was, you know, that was the end of my night. Uh, and the lesson there is get the right flux, acid flux, and the right solder. If you get the right flux and the right solder, things are easier. So, so my next that, challenge... Who built that chassis, Yana? Oh, you probably recognize it, don't you? It's Tony's. It, is it a, a Tony Mills? Tony James. Oh, Tony James. Okay, the rock star. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, got it. Yeah. So I've uh, I've a really I've got nice guy. Yeah. And I'm really, you know, I'm looking at what because he said, Oh, you can have this. I'm sort of four stages away from where this was, you know, four four <laughs> evolutions away from this. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at what he's got now and I'm just I I I'm speechless really, but there you go. Uh, That's how it goes. They tend to make very complex cars in the UK somehow. We it, it it's driven a bit by the type of tracks you run on. Um, yeah, our cars are a lot simpler because our tracks are a lot smoother and and um, more banking. Yeah, I like the the front wheels on that car came from me. Yes, they did. Uh, yes, they did. Uh, mm -hmm. They were quite hard to source in the UK. I got them from George Kimber. Yes, he's the, so, he's my he's my representative in the UK. Um, so my next uh, brass chassis build is going to be a Can Am chassis. And then I'm told after I've done that, I've got to build a Tottenham chassis. And that's oh. when we get to serious. That's when we get to serious stuff. That's like trying to hold a wildcat down by the scruff of its neck, you know. So I've seen those cars and I'm not sure I've got what it takes to do that. So that's my split into the different things I'm doing at the moment. Wonderful. Um, and uh, all of it is good. I mean, somebody once said to me, if you want to be a snot car racer, get the hell out of that one club you're racing at. Race as many different clubs as you can, as many times as you can, and race as many different cars and styles as you can. And eventually you become good at this. I know I'm slowly getting there, slowly getting there. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's my bit over, Greg. <laughs> that was perfect. Thanks, Alan. All right, you're next, Dennis. All right. So um, today I'm not going to try with a different um, with a different camera. I'm just going to I'm just going to play this away. Uh, Duan will recognize this. Yes. Uh, it's one of about nine 
old Ravel cars that he sent me. Um, he and I have got a uh, have got a barter system going on right now because he has a large amount of monogram track that I'm quite interested in, and uh, um, he also has a whole bunch of cars that need work. So this one, this is the better of the two because there were two of these um, uh, Aston Martins that he sent me. So I haven't started working on that one yet, but I started on the other one. And the, the body already has uh, new stickers on it, which I created. Okay. Cool, cool. cool. And it's had a bit of a polish. It's missing its um, it's missing its uh, grill in the front and part of the bumper. I'll have to see whether I can find parts, but for now I've just put some chrome paint in there. And then I took the inside out because he wanted uh, to paint that up. So uh, we're starting there with a with a painted interior, right? The regular you know monogram and Ravel driver sitting in a puddle of oil. Um, <laughs> style that we all used to have and so then that will go back in there and just pop the body you know make everything pop a little bit better and then the, the chassis I have already uh, cleaned it up um, found out found out how to get the, the, the wheels and the axle and the, the gears out so that that could all be cleaned cleaned up the motor got that all running reset all the braids um, and uh, painted the wheel inserts again so that they're they're a little wow. better. And so uh, this one's coming on. It won't be long, and it'll be uh, that one will be ready to go. I'll get the the, the tires for it that we uh, probably tomorrow when I'm at um, Electric Dream. So I just thought I'd let you guys know uh, that there's a a whole bunch of these nice old um, Ravel cars coming. Uh, awesome. for Dewan and uh, by the time we're done he'll be the proud owner of all these nice clean shiny cars and I'll be the proud owner of a nice clean shiny monogram Riverside uh, 124 scale set yeah. track set fully restored for Dewan's expert hands <laughs> I was going to show up your set too but I didn't, I didn't get set up for that but yeah it's, it's <laughs> Awesome. You have, uh, oh, and then of course I've got other things going on. He gave me two Scalextric, um, Scalextric uh, Camaros, uh, Z28s that he wants in in pitch black. And then of course we the very first thing that we had to do was to uh, make a couple of little adjustments to the driver, <laughs> the, the, the driver ethnicity, in order to ensure that it's got the right guy in the car, right? Yes. So. Uh, He's already done. I don't know, Duan, whether you ever wore a black jacket and a cream turtleneck shirt, but uh, if you that. didn't, let me know, and I can make an adjustment to that as well. That's perfect. But, uh, and I'm afraid the, the the paint looks like you had a fair amount of a fair amount of hair, um, or maybe brill cream or something in your hair at the day on the day, because it's a little shiny. But uh, there you are, buddy. Okay, great, great looking. That's the uh... So that's the actual car that I had and I was driving for and I still have the car. I'm actually gonna be restoring it. Okay. So, yes. Yeah. Love the it. the body the body's in my drying cabinet right now. I'll bring it over in a couple of minutes and you can see. Wow. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's me for now. Um, I could I could pull out some retro cars later on if Alan's still interested, but um, for now let's give somebody else the next Okay. It looks like we're done with show and tell. Unless anybody else has a show and tell, you can wave your real hand if you want. Not seeing any hands waving. Oh, Alan, go ahead. Yeah. Um, Dennis, I think I heard you mention the other week that you'd like some black arrow parts. Uh, and so as a kind of a finish up for the, the weekend we just did, uh, we, uh, we did the Eindhoven digital weekend. And as a result of that, we broke a lot of gear, including uh, including this one, which is a GT car for the Saturday. So this was the Black Arrow car that we built for the Saturday. I built. And it wasn't such wasn't so great. Uh, and a consequence of that, we've been doing our lessons learned as a team. And uh, one of the things we've come to conclude is 
we can't use the Black Arrow anymore as a team um, because for GT3, there are these new tires, the G25, 15, 13 or something. They're just too fat and tall to go under the wheel arch. So we can't use it for that. And we can't use it for the wet spec GT cars either because it's just not robust enough. Um, it's the result of the, uh, the chassis. And that's just after three hours racing. Sorry, oh, one and a half hours racing, digital. So despite trying to keep this car alive with 3D pod upgrades of various things, you know, I've got all sorts of things like the seal bearings and I was really hoping I'd be able to step this car up and keep it. But the truth is we're not going to be racing black arrows anymore because they just don't fit. The rules have changed underneath us and that's it. And as a consequence of that, this is where Dennis will be interested. I have lots and lots of this kind of stuff. Which I'd be oh, interested yeah. to exchange for something, you know, if you can use this, I can use something for the black capital cars, you know, whatever it is, I'll send you an email or contact you somehow and then we'll work out okay. what we can do. Okay? Cool. Let's do some let's do some horse training. It's always a good good idea. <laughs> All good. Um yeah, here's here's the body to one. Here's the first one. Uh you wanted a really you wanted a really deep black. I think you got it, but Wow. Awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> All right. So that's the that's the, the first body with its with its with its paint on. Now, uh Alan, um Can Am cars. There's the one that I've just finished running this weekend. Uh, maybe I should wait until we get to uh Club Corner. <laughs> I mean you're showing a thing, so that's fine. Doesn't matter. Oh, okay. I mean, we're pretty uh, much ready to go ran, to the corner anyway, so this will be. Yeah, we ran what was called we ran what was called the Checkpoint Cup this weekend, which is a, a major retro race in Southern California. Uh, we started with um, uh, angle winder, uh, what we call coupes or coupes for you guys in the UK, two seater closed cockpit uh, cars. Uh, we run these with angle winder frames. Uh, you'll never see any tires on my cars because they're put away uh, so that they don't dry out. Um, so the, the way that I store my cars, they never have any tires on them. Uh, but this is an angle winder car. Runs with a, a JK Hawk Retro motor um, with my ball bearing wheels on the front. This is a Palmer Lola T70. Um, I'm trying to get this thing into the into mm -hmm. there we go. Uh, Lola T70 body shell. Uh, pretty much the body shell that everybody uses these days because it works really well. It's not that scale, but uh, none of our stuff is. Mm -hmm. Then we ran uh, <clears throat> Formula One cars. Uh, there's uh, my Formula One car. Um, mm -hmm. With a these these bodies come from Russia, from a company called Oleg. Uh, this is the Certes TS7, uh, mm. a, a reasonably good um, uh, representation of a Certes. And then we also ran uh, Can-Am. Uh, my Can-Am car, is, as most of our Can-Am cars are, is always a, a, for the King for our King tracks anyway. Pretty much always a. a, a an Autocoast TI-22 body of some um, made by one or other of the various um, slot car body manufacturers. Uh, you can see it has a very aerodynamic shape. It has some fairly pronounced fins along the side and uh, and quite a bit of a dip on the sides of the body here, which provide quite a bit of downforce. And um, so then, then we run those. But of course, all of these are inlines. Um, Alan was talking about uh, the Tottenham cars. This is a this is one of the the, the cars built to the British Tottenham specifications, which is a, an even more aerodynamic body with a more complex angle winder chassis, uh, built to run on flat tracks, so a lot heavier than our than our Can Am cars would be. I mean, this car doesn't. I guess it. It's just under nine, just under a hundred grams, like ninety-eight point something. Whereas this thing is like a hundred and twenty, uh, so a whole lot more. But with a lot more motor, 
than the uh, than the inline Can M cars. This is a George Kimber car uh, that he built me some years back. Um, so that's mm -hmm. just that. So, these, so that's this that is story. The that, uh... Dennis, are those all foamed wheeled cars, I assume? Yes, all foam, that, all foam tires. Is that why you don't have the tires on them? Do they tend to yeah, flat? Yeah, because I, I take the foam tires off once I've, once I've raced, and I put them back in those little tubes that Alan was showing you, and I store them like that, uh, because otherwise they dry, the, the some of the plasticizers dry out, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the tire loses its grip. Um, I Thank buy, I, I make my own mostly, I, I, can <laughs> glue, I buy the donuts, just the rubber and I have, and I reuse the hubs and I glue them on and true them myself. And all of those donuts that I buy, those I keep in the refrigerator in my garage, all in, oh. plas in plastic bags in the refrigerator. I was going to you ask keep... you if they're temperature sensitive, Dennis, you just answered my question. Yeah, so it, you keep, it, you keep your tires in the fridge. I keep my tires in the fridge. Yep. Wow. Okay. Babies. It just keeps them. It just keeps them fresh a lot longer, right? And yeah. um, certainly, I keep all the donuts in the fridge. I don't necessarily once I've once I cut them, and uh, you know, glued them and cut them to size and start using them. I I don't usually put them back in the refrigerator. That I'm not as anal as as some guys are with that, um, but. Uh, it's still, uh, it, it does help to keep them in the fridge. Okay. Come and on, when you're talking about, uh, Alan was talking about getting the different foam tires. Um, there's, there's, there's a lot of differences in, the, in different types of foam from different manufacturers. And there is quite a bit of difference in the handling of the car, depending on the, the, the relative diameter of the tire overall and the hub. Right, the bigger the bigger the hub, the less the the better the forward traction, but the less the sideways traction on the on the on the tire. The smaller the hub, you get better grip around mostly. Although it does, there are some other changes that come along. But in general, there's a there's quite an art to selecting, not only the the size the diameter of the hub. But also the type of of foam that's on there, and even the type of hub, because if you go from a plastic hub to a carbon fiber hub to a magnesium hub, even if they're all the same size and the same size tire, the handling characteristics of the car will change. Yeah, I have all of that to learn, and I'm going to be in the deep <laughs> end because this year yeah. I'm uh, I'm hoping to do two meetings at two different venues. So one at Rockingham. I mean, I go to Rockingham yeah. regularly, but never never mm -hmm. go on that track. And one at Highlands, and I don't even know where that is. So That's I'll be in Inverness, Scotland. Definitely. Oh my God. Okay, Scotland. All right. <laughs> uh -huh. so, so I'm. Uh, what I'm. This is really early days for me, and. One of the things I learned from 132 scale racing is when you're learning, just do what the fast guys do. Don't question it. Don't think about it. Just look what they're doing and copy it. It's and then try it. and figure out, yeah, then try and figure out why it works and then try and figure out if there's an edge you can get. But that is a long, long way away. And I won't be able to do very much in the way of, uh, of brass chassis racing this year because between the Sandra uh, Group C oxygen races, five of those this year between the national GT races, six of those oxygen this year in three different venues. There's Henley Le Mans and we, we did Eindhoven and there's a race in Belgium sometime this year that I've committed to do as well. So I'm, I'm really, I'm totally, I'm going to be totally slotted out by the end of the year. It's awesome that there's so much oxygen racing going on. Yeah. Well, it's awesome that there's so much slot racing going on uh, in Just general. Goal, yeah. <laughs> there are all those people who keep telling us that the golden age of slot cars was years ago and slot cars are dying. Oh, as far as I'm concerned, the golden age of slot car racing is right now, guys, right now. Okay. Gio, did you still have a question? Something. Yeah, so if basically Dennis would be willing to do kind of a small tutorial on how to uh basically cutting a donuts and you know put put uh sponge ties on into the 
pubs and how because I know they is much more complex than just uh with the uh, with the rubber. I think it's a uh, it's a bit more involved than just a glue rubber on top of uh, the house. Yeah, I would I would think that probably uh, right now the best way to do that would be to go and look for James Cleave uh, on YouTube at Cleave Tech. Uh, he mm -hmm. has a very good episode in his tech tips about how to how to glue and uh, 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 how to mount foam rubber tires. The very first thing you need is some of this. It's a, it's a spray adhesive, 3M, number 80, rubber and vinyl adhesive, the very best stuff for gluing tires. Nothing comes close. Uh, for the strength of the for the strength of the um, the joint and for the ease of using and applying it because you you take this stuff it's in this big spray can you spray a little bit into a into a saucer or a little cup or a, a bottle cap or something like that you use a Q-tip you put it on the on the um, put it on the uh, on the donut and around the wheel you leave it to dry for a while you wet it with a little bit of uh, <coughs> Uh, lacquer thinner, so you slide the two together, let them dry, and you're done. And you don't, Dennis, that sounds like careful, the same. you don't even get the glue on your fingers. Dennis, that sounds like the same same way we did RC tires back in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, exactly the same way as we did RC tires back in the 80s and 90s. It was a pain. Yeah, we now. used to use Evo stick in to glue our, our donuts uh -huh. onto our Yes, yeah. our Evo stick is fine and probably still fine. It's just this stuff is better. But one word of warning, never, never, ever try to use this stuff to glue our 132nd scale rubber tires. You can ask me why I know, but I'm telling you, never, <laughs> ever do it. I mean, we'll I take gonna, your word for it. I wasn't going to ask, know. actually. <laughs> right, melts the tire <laughs> or something, what happens? Yeah, something, something in the, whatever the solvent is that they use in there to make it sprayable absolutely wrecks the tire it it attacks the rubber and the tire basically crumbles in front of your in your in in, in front of your eyes it's terrible <laughs> i right. think you know maybe if you left it and left all that stuff out gas and you just have the adhesive when you're done but it's vicious stuff and it just it ruins a regular rubber tire it's great for farm but it ruins a regular over time. Yeah. Good to know. <laughs> you know, Dennis, you were reminiscing there about you being a bit whimsical about the state of the slot car industry and everything going to hell. I mean, when I was racing radio control cars in the mid 80s, everyone at that time was saying, the best days of this are gone. The best tape was the, less set, the late 70s. That's when everything was good. Now everything's going downhill. There are less people. There's something endemic in a slot car racer or radio control car racer's mind that says the good days are gone. Everybody has it. I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah, I try. I try not to do that. Um, there were times, particularly in electric RC, where things were going downhill. <clears throat> but uh, battery technology and brushless motors uh, saved electric radio control car racing. Um, that, that was huge when the batteries changed. Yeah, yeah. And, the motors. and and nowadays the better the brushless motors are starting to uh, find their way into slot car racing too. Um, there are two guys in the UK, a fellow by the name of Richard Mack and his friend Bob Budge, who have been developing a new uh, a control board that goes into a slot car that will control the brushless motor. In the slot car, and they're using motors out of the drones, and those motors are 11 millimeters diameter and six millimeters long. They are the tiniest little things you've ever seen in your life, and they have absolutely amazing performance. Um, they car the, the motors cost twelve dollars and ninety nine cents. Right. Uh, they last for. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of hours until maybe the bearings give out because there's other than the bearings there's basically nothing to wear yeah. out right uh, they are yeah. those what they call outrunners where the the outside of the motor is the piece that rotates 
and you buy those little drone motors and you just have to push the you have to push the the shaft out and put in a new shaft that's two millimeter all the way through so you can mount a pinion on the opposite side to where the to where the drone guys would be wanting to mount it and then they bolt into a they bolt into a slot car and the performance is just incredible because first off you're, you're getting a lot of power say but the the big deal is it the, the weight is so 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 much less than a regular uh, permanent magnet motor or a regular brush motor of the same kind of performance yeah yeah you know what it's like going from a long can motor to a short can motor. So take from a short can motor that same amount of uh, that same amount of improvement again below that in terms of weight because you know that yeah. I drove one at the weekend uh, for the I first see, time. Tony, Tony Mills had one. Yeah, they're incredible. When I was up there last, and I I can believe it what they were doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, true. you don't have to go faster. You could probably find a specification of a brushless motor that runs about the same as as um, as any current motor that you're running. But the, you get the immediate advantage of uh, the fact that every week the motor is going to be the same, uh, that it doesn't wear out that easily. Um, so I think in the and that and that all the motors are going to be very very much closer in performance. Because the the final performance of the motor is determined by the speed controller and not by the inherent variations yeah. inside the motor. It's, yeah, it's he, sort of he was saying that the dearest part yeah. is the board. The the most right. expensive part is the board. Yeah, currently yeah. they're around, they're running around fifty dollars. Um, yeah. But you can take that board and put it in the, in a different car. You can move them around. Um, eventually. Obviously, the boards will get cheaper as people, you know, as the demand goes up and as uh, the guys uh, can find the, the components again. I've had a lot of trouble finding the right components. It's difficult to see a transition, though, in regular analog slot car racing to adopt those motors. In RC racing, you already had onboard speed controllers. And all yeah, that really true. happened was that you had to buy different speed controllers and different motors and 12 scale RC made that transition not too difficult. For analog racers, a lot of them have nothing like that. And even the digital racers and companies that support and manufacture those, uh, like Slot It and the Oxygen System, I just don't foresee that Maurizio and Slot It are going to go in that direction uh, because they have enough problems just maintaining what they have. See Maurizio running around trying to fault find problems on the new version Pro version 4 firmware at Eindhoven, I can see he's already got his plate full of anything he would possibly want. I just don't see that they would uh, integrate uh, brushless technology into into oxygen at all in the near future, which is a well, shame. Well, certainly not the near future, but I think, you know, maybe four or five years from now, we might be looking at it a little differently. Could be. I hope so. Because I saw the difference. I, I've been to see some uh, radio control 12 scale car racing over the last five or six years since that transition was made. And I never drove those motors, but you can see how consistent the performance is. Mm -hmm. You can see that it's the drivers and the handling of the chassis that's making the difference. Well, the, the other thing in RC racing in 12 scale, you had to cut the comm. At, at, at the top level, you had to cut the comm pretty much every run or yeah. two. And we don't have that problem with these with with thirty second scale. So everybody sold their com cutters and bought brushless motors. Yeah, I can't see that. I can't see brushless motors in one thirty second scale cars for a while. Um, I don't know that it. I don't know that it's going to be. Um, well, first off, I don't know that the the brushless motor technology can provide a mild enough motor. I think even the smallest motors that we're running they are going to, in brushless versions, are going to have too much performance for a 132nd scale car. Well, they exist in, in miniature scale. The drone, guys, the drone guys have got four on them on a, four of them on a drone that's smaller than the palm of your hand. Well, yeah, that's what he's talking they're, about, they're, they're tiny, 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 tiny. <laughs> well, maybe they can. Eight millimeter anyway. diameter motors. I'm, I'm curious about, 
I, you know, I don't understand electronics, right? In spite of my knowledge of how, of what things do, I have no idea how they do them, but I'm curious why you can't put the ESC in the controller. And... Uh, the reason, the reason for that, Greg, is that the, the motors we use are basically Victorian technology. The commutator switches the magnetic field as the poles rotate. Now in a, a brushless motor, that's all done with uh, MOSFETs, transistors. So you have optical sensors on the motor and the electronic speed control then changes the direction of the current and the amount of current and the amount of voltage to create the hysteresis loop. So it's, it's, uh, it, it's just a different approach. I'd say that if, um, if the Victorians had had transistors, <laughs> a commutator mode would never have existed. They would just, it would never have been existed. Yeah, or in, more, in a simpler terms, basically, uh, brushless motors need the free cables. So for yeah. us, if you're going to put uh, the, co the controller or the ESC in your controller, you, we will need uh, a third brake or a third array or something else for controlling the stuff. Yeah. And, and I, that's a basic... the, I would imagine that the, the extra length of wire and, and, through the braids and the rails and all that no, stuff. No. Yeah. Problems. Well, it's not even the extra length of wire. It's just the fact that a brushless motor requires three wires going into the motor in yeah. order to prove, in order to control its speed. Oh, okay. And so it, we just don't have so we need a three rail track. You would need a you would need a, a three rail <laughs> okay. track of some sort. So you would have perfect a, a rail on each side and another contact in the bottom of the okay. slot or something like that would be the only way. Gotcha. So, so the no, amount of the amount of change of the basic technology is enormous. Yeah, no, un yeah. untenable. That that is a great explanation. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, Gio's got the right idea there. <laughs> yeah, simple, because simple, 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 simple. yeah, when uh, when yeah when when Greg said why we don't put on control, so yeah, that's a weird idea. But then I say, oh shit, but you need the free wires, so we're yeah. gonna get to the because no, yeah, it, the way in the most scientific uh, the most scientific shut up way the most scientific. Uh, a kind of explanation was from uh, from from Alan actually, but yeah, I mean yeah. Uh, that's the kind of stuff. Wayne, but if, do you have if any update third... on the Suzuka race? <laughs> I was just gonna say, let's go ahead and move into Club Corner. So if you have any past, present, or future more than yourself driving a race car around the track, now's the time to talk about it. I would love to hear about Suzuka. Apparently, Alan was part of that as well. So anything you guys want to share? Uh, anybody else? Put your hand up. And, and we'll make sure to call on you. I don't see any hands yet. Big Danny, you trying to put your hand up? <laughs> I would invite Alan to. Uh, uh... Yeah, Alan, you go first. <laughs> go ahead. I tried to weigh There we go. There you go. Uh, the Gas Monkey experience was not good last weekend. Uh, and most of the issues we had were to do with the firmware upgrade and controller issues and different ha things happening with a lap counter. It was annoying because we had a really fast car, um, which was the Corvette for the, the second day was great. And it produced the fastest lap of any GT car, but swiftly succumbed to brake failure, lap counter failure, uh, basic control failure. Uh, and all of that has gone uh, to uh, uh, to Gary Skip and to Maurizio to do some fault finding. They're looking at version four firmware and trying to figure out what's what. All I can say is, you know, being the gas monkeys, we drank a hell of a lot of beer and we had a hell of a lot of good times, even though the racing wasn't great. And, any and that special, was it, you know? Any special cookies while you were in Eindhoven? <laughs> no, 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 no. Of that, no, we're a, we're a, we're a kind of a rock. A rock club kind of thing. It's like alcohol is our thing. You know? Graham likes some nicotine. All that other stuff, that's hippie stuff. You know, I'll leave that to everybody else. <laughs> but we had a good time. The the venue was great. The track was really good. And I know that because I thought I'm really struggling with this. It will take me several visits to get on top of that track. Um, and the track is genuinely... something else, isn't it, Alan? You you but don't come away from there thinking you've mastered it at all. Yeah, no, no, no. But it was very busy. <laughs> Sixteen teams on that track. It was squeezed on the track and it was very squeezed on the podium. But you know, we'll be back. We're going back there definitely. We're definitely going to have some more of that. So anyway, Wayne, you can tell us what what you got up to. So before we go to Wayne, which controller did you have? Uh, we started with. 
uh, an SCP-3 because we don't we never used an SCP-3 as a team. And the reason to do that was we have a cloned pair of SCP-2s that have been almost faultless. And we've had one problem, a mechanical problem, but when you get something that works, stick with it. So we have yep. a cloned pair of controllers. We had a controller fail one time and we swapped it out just like that and carried on. It cost us two laps or something to swap the controller out. Um, so we didn't want to upgrade those to version four. We took an SCP-3 and upgraded it to version four and that worked well on the Saturday. And then we took a wired SCP-2 uh, for the Sunday and upgraded that and we had some problems with that. And we think that maybe there are some issues with the controller anyway. Um, and we're just going to continue to look into that. But our, uh, all of our problems, most of our problems, were caused by uh, upgrades. We had a couple of fried chips. And uh, generally, the racing didn't go our way. Um, Saturday, we really discovered that the Ferrari can no longer do the job. Uh, and on Sunday, we discovered that all the things we normally do about preserving our race, our racing set, like our racing pair of controllers, racing pair of chips in the two different versions, uh, we couldn't do that because of the version four upgrade, and uh, we paid the price for it really badly. Uh, but you know, it's all these are all prep events for the main event at Derby, number one later in the year. That's the main event. We we learn lessons from that. And, we're learning lessons from Eindhoven, and we're, we're going to attack that with everything when that event comes along. So the, the entire weekend was pretty much an alpha test of, of Oxygen 4, right? They didn't ever revert to 3? All three races were done on version 4? The Chrono was reverted. The Chrono was reverted. The okay. version 4 firmware in the chips uh, was not. The version 4 firmware in the controllers was not backed out. Um, so anybody who had an upgrade done went home with that on their controller or at home with that on their chips. Uh, and if they want to do something else, uh, they have to then do the downgrade themselves, try the app or something. Uh, as a team, we've decided that we're going to take the things that were upgraded and we're going to put those in a box and not use them again until, until we need a version 4. So we're going to stick with our version 3 handsets and kind of work it like that. So, okay. but the Chrono was updated. The, the new version of Chrono, I've forgotten what it's even called, was having real problems on the Saturday and on the Sunday's race, they've just reverted to Chrono. Yeah. The version four, yeah. It would be difficult <laughs> about, to say. What about you, Wayne? What's your take on the weekend? Well, we had an awful weekend, but we had three great races. We managed to score fifth position in the first GT3 race on Saturday, fifth position in the second race, and then in the six-hour WEC, fifth position. We did have problems. Uh, the GT3 races for us, with regard to control and lap counting, were faultless, but and so was practice and qualifying for the WEC. But as soon as the race began, we shot off into a huge lead on the timing system because our car was counting twice every lap. Cheater. We were... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we yeah. weren't really leading. We weren't really leading at all, and we knew it, but we were uh, at the front of the field on the lap timing. So I went over to the timing screen. Maurizio was in race control, and he suggested that the best solution that he could see for our problem was to change the whole sensor in the car. Immediately the discussion becomes, well, it's worked perfectly until just now, nothing has changed. Why should we need to do that? It's your system that's counting the car twice, not us. Well, if you don't do it, you're gonna end up in pit lane mode. I'm not gonna sleep. I'm not gonna talk, I think is what you said. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, are you I gonna edit this out? Camera, okay? oh. or are you gonna leave it there? Uh, you got... promise you ain't gonna speak <laughs> <laughs> too, too much. You're a big fat liar. Plastic. Well, if that's the worst thing I am, 
All right. I guess Wayne's done for now. <laughs> <laughs> we, you we need to edit have... something, Greg, afterwards. I was about to hit, I was about to hit mute. Are you? What's going on, Wayne? Are you? Should you stop? Wayne has met his match. Yeah. <laughs> happy wife, happy life, Wayne. <laughs> I might have met her years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, right, I'll, I'll tell you, my, my little one needs to go to sleep and if i could, if, if that if that happens i'll come back to you okay we'll we'll, we'll let wayne go for now uh, <laughs> i don't think anybody else here was in attendance at that race so i guess we'll move on to big dan and then we'll we'll hear from duan go ahead big dan yeah okay um before i do a screen share just got a couple of questions that come up on earlier. Joe's Jim, Jim Rose. Um, you've been yeah, in some of your classes. You're using the NSR Formula One wheels in other chassis. Do you have to change the bearings and the axles because the the NSR wheels I've found have got a smaller, slightly smaller diameter. And I just wonder whether you've got to change the whole back end to use those those uh, NSR wheels on those other chassis. Uh, if we're using them on the racer sideways, we just we just put NSR axles in the car. Yeah, okay. You don't change okay. the bearings. The, the, no, I don't change those at all. I mean, the the difference technically there's a difference, but it's so small it doesn't seem to make any yeah. make any difference. So yeah, okay. I haven't I changed the bushings out. Yeah, I was just wondering whether you might get a bit of wobble or something like that. And a couple of things Dennis mentioned: um, a cautionary tale when you um, uh, store your donuts in the fridge. Always wear your glasses if you're a licorice fancy, because you might grab the right, the wrong thing late at night when you go for a snack. So, um, did you get that one, Jim? We're we're storing our super glue in the refrigerator now too, so that's an even better, yeah. a bigger yeah. issue. That's not vodka. Uh, yeah, <laughs> talking about super glue, I had a friend of mine um, uh, recently confused super glue with his eye drops, um, with some um, consequences that he didn't. You know, that weren't very good. You know, tipped the wrong thing in his eyes to put him, out, yeah, put him out of commission for a few days. And the other thing, Dennis, the the car, one of the cars you were detailing for Dewan, you know, with the with the slick back hair, I would have thought an appropriate potion would have been Californian poppy. Did, did you have that over there as a as a hairdressing aid? Or yeah, we we had a we had a hair slick in Australia many years ago called Californian poppy. And no, I just thought that might have been more appropriate for the <laughs> one. Okay. Well, Before my time in California. Yeah. Okay. So levity over. Let's get the let's get the business now, and uh, we'll do a share screen. Uh, and here we go. So we had. Oops. Have we got the? What are we sharing there? Is that the folder? Is it? Yeah, you're sharing the folder. Oh, uh, well, well. Okay, I'll go again. I thought I, I thought I was sharing the picture. Uh, okay, now we're in business. Yep. Yeah, okay. So we had a we had a Saturday meeting a couple of weeks ago, twenty-first of January, I believe. We had eight races turn up. Um one guy came up from Hobart, uh, another fellow from uh, one of the local clubs who hadn't been with us before. So uh, one of the great things about having eight people is that you had plenty of people to stand on the turns to marshal when needed. Um, it's a bit of a struggle when there's only five or six of us. So that Group C was first up and um, um, the host and his father took the top two spots in that. Um, you think when you've um, been around slot car racing for quite a while that, um, uh, you know, you've got everything covered and uh, you have, you, 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 sometimes life teaches you lessons, as you'll see in the results there, when you when you first bracket, you do 18 and give everyone 10 or 11 laps start because you haven't checked your braids or aligned properly. Um, it's not going to make your chances of getting on the podium any better. So uh, that's one I hope I don't fall for again. Uh, next up was was uh, GT2. Uh, looks like our young cameraman might have might have had one of the light beers that I was supposed to have there with, a, with his first shot. But um, yeah, GT2s again. Um, 
Ah, that's a better one. And uh, da Dave, the host, uh, took the first place. And the uh, all Revo slot. I was going to say mm. it looks like a Revo slot class at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all, all yeah, all Revos, uh, all Revo GT twos, Greg. Um, our young host is um, uh, our young sort of cameraman. He was in second place there. That's my car in third. Again, a lesson learned is that when you put your own car on at a particular turn, Dennis, please, pay, Dennis, that's me, Dennis, please pay attention and put it behind the counters, not in front of the counters, because it doesn't <laughs> do it doesn't do your scores any any favours. So again, that's why I'm claiming I didn't get second place, you know, because I would have been <laughs> close other than that. Uh, you can believe it or not. And our final race was sort of open. LMP GT ones, um, Revo's, yeah, the the Revo um, multicolored GT ones were pretty um, were pr pretty prevalent here. You can see three or four, three or four of them in the yeah, thing. So, um, a, a slot, a slotted, a slotted in the front there, slotted. A uh, car in the back was I loaned a car to, to our mate Scotty from Hobart because his car had trouble. So. Um, uh, that's the spirit there. He, he he did actually store his best heat store with my car, so it's not a, not a bad car. But and one thing, even if you take every uh, every precaution, what you can't control is when another racer plonks his car on your lane <laughs> as you're coming flat out down the main straight. So probably cost me second place there. There was no. No way I would have caught young Dave. So um, five laps different, but I might have got over. I might have got over young Alex. So uh, all in all, a good um, a good turnout and a good day's racing. Um, the, to our two new uh, entrants were at the bottom. Prof is actually he's a guy. He's a he's a professor at our local university um, in the one of the uh, nursing schools, I think. And someone misheard misheard him once. He said, "I'm a prof at uni." And they thought he said he was a prophet. So his name, his nickname has been spelt as in the, uh, the prophet type thing. Uh, back to Friday night racing. Um, this Friday coming, if that's tomorrow our time. And it's a bit of a Revo fest with the three classes you can see there. Um, hopefully I'll have my alpha together to um, be able to participate in that, that class. So I think that's about all I've, all I've got. So I'll stop the share and and hit the mute button <laughs> all righty thanks for sharing big den uh always love hearing about fun racing and dewan are you ready sir i suppose so take it away yeah. oh wait where did it go there ready it Okay. Hey, Dylan, so, did you get that salt and pepper beard on uh, Dwayne there and his new? <laughs> <laughs> that, that was my early years. Yeah, no, his it's early years for him. He told me that I had to do him. I had to do a 1980s version of him, not a uh, vintage version. Two version. Classic. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, um, I missed last week. Well, I was up for about a minute or two last week. Uh, I was out of town and I left my uh, charger for my laptop, so I didn't want to do with my phone. It wasn't didn't have the bandwidth. I did invite the uh, gentleman that uh, showcased his digital uh, career track uh, to participate, and I'm, I'm glad he had an opportunity to do that. It was a phenomenal track. Uh, for those of you guys who saw it from last week. Uh, um, I'm, I'm envy of that. Uh, if I, once I go digital, I'll be using his his uh, uh, track as a, a benchmark. Um, but uh, many of you know that I uh, recently, I guess about a year or so, started uh, racing with the Far Out uh, uh, Slot Car Club in Southern California. So I go from Vegas down to California about every two weeks. They have a match. They have a race every two weeks thereabouts, uh, approximately. And so a week and a half ago, uh, what we had a race over at uh, gentleman Richard uh, Rodriguez's house. And this is a track that he has. He inherited it from another member of the club, uh, Chris, who used to have the track. And he's uh, um, acquired the track from Chris and done some touch up works and things like that. It's a nice, uh, it's a smaller track, uh, a three liner, and, um, but it's nice and got some technical aspects to it. It's been fast. 
And uh, so I uh, just kind of had some highlights uh, for our Far Out Club uh, racing set up here for you guys. So this is pretty much the layout of his track. And um, I don't know why that image came in so much smaller, but it's uh, that's the little picture of the control, race control. And um, right here is uh, actually the, the founder of the club, Stephen Farrell Jones. That's uh, the fearless leader dictator of the club, and he takes it very seriously. <laughs> and uh, again, the pit area. Um, that's me working there. I guess that, that, that's part of why that one was smaller. I guess I'll wait see a little bit of the setup. It's in his garage. That's the owner, Rich Rodriguez. This is his track, and uh, he did quite well. Unfortunately, I don't have the results, and no one seems to have the results posted. Uh, this happened a day after um, um, the gentleman and Fresno died. I actually didn't know him quite well. I think I've raced with him once. But he's uh, also a member of the club and comes down quite a bit and goes to lecture like, dreams quite often. And so pretty somber uh, time knowing that he got killed uh, due to some uh, reckless uh, um, uh, drunk driver, apparently. Anyhow, I know that uh, Jim mentioned all that. But anyway, so we, we're hoping to get the results up soon. And again, it's another picture of Mr. Uh, uh, Stephen Farr. Even far again, and uh, yeah, this is the racing, and uh, obviously the picture of me in my pit area. And one of the, the unique things about uh, um, this particular race, I invited a couple of my friends. Well, my very best friend that I've known since she was nine years old. She came out with her niece, <clears throat> and um, they actually did take a few laps around the track. And that's her niece right there. That uh, she's only six years old. And she did at least uh, four laps around the track without coming off. Nice. Um, yeah, you know, so it's, she, she really has a knack for it. Right? So I'm, I'm kind of impressed with her. She's kind of taking an interest in it. And they're, they're blaming me for getting them hooked into this uh, this hobby, but it's not my, my fault. <laughs> I just showed them what it looked like, and they just took to it. So, hey, so that's about the size. But I think I didn't have a video, but the video doesn't show very well. It's very uh, low resolution so that's pretty much it yeah the girls seem to always get it a little bit quicker than the boys do <laughs> he really does have a lot, a lot more knack than the, the, the i mean is he six years old six <laughs> so. my granddaughter's six and she goes around my track in nine seconds wow so she is really she's 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 catching me up that's how bad it is <laughs> Good. <laughs> now you get some competition. <laughs> yeah. I've read it. I, I had trouble keeping up with her, but she did have magnet in her car. But uh, you know, <laughs> it was still a nice little challenge. <laughs> well, Maggie, she goes to great. She goes, Granddad, can I have a new car? She goes, Why? She goes, Well, this one's not as quick as yours, so I can I have one of your cars and you buy yourself a new car? I'm like, Shit, no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in a couple more years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> keep coming, keep racing. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, thanks, Dwan. And uh, it looks like the floor is open. I don't see anybody else wanting to do Club Corner. So I don't know. I think. Um, uh, yeah, I got one more okay. thing to show. All right. Jeremy will, Jeremy will like to see this. It arrived. Thank you very much indeed. It's, uh, one of Jeremy's uh, risen prints. Uh, it's my C three hundred Mercedes. We found a. I found a. Um, I found a file online. Sent it to Jeremy, and uh, this is what I got. So, I think it looks great, and I'm cool. looking forward to putting it together. Got the emblem. Have it everything inside, right? <laughs> Maybe try to throw it on to the floor. Do not throw it on the floor. There's a little tearing <laughs> on that. There's a little tearing on that other corner, but I couldn't. I couldn't uh, get it to stop lifting, and I was like, "Eh." I wasn't going to show that, Jim. Yeah, I was I going to leave that so that people could be suitably impressed with your, <laughs> with your, uh, with your expertise you and not bother that with part. that at all. Now, yeah. This is a. It's a very oh. whatever the resin is. It's a very flexible resin. 
Little um, I was ask. Unfortunately, you know, the tiny little things like the like the little three pointed star that was on the front, uh, that doesn't that doesn't survive being dropped, I'm afraid. Uh, <laughs> but seeing as my car doesn't have one of those anyway, I was gonna take it off. Um but yeah. Uh, Are you gonna do that place. live in front of everybody or you're gonna do on removing ah. the the small uh he's already done it. It's supposed to he's already done it. Hood anyways. <laughs> There's a little so, nub left there. Yeah. It's yeah, oh, it's already okay. gone. Uh you can oh, see there okay. it's just the bottom end of the of the circle of the yeah, 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 yeah. So which colors are you gonna to apply to that? Classic oh. Dennis colors. Classic Silver. Dennis colors, yeah. Well, I thought well, you were making it look like yellow. a real. Car. I don't know. I I, I had thought yeah. maybe the first thing I'll do is paint it the way the car is right now, which is plain, you know, with the full size one, which is plain white. Yeah. And then I thought, uh, you know, boring. I mean, <laughs> paint it the way my wife says I should. I should have my my full size car uh, skinned uh, in my in metallic blue and silver and pink. Yep. But I. Oh, uh, I still don't know whether I could take get myself to the point of of driving a full size car that's metallic blue, silver, and pink. <laughs> but anyway, you might be always, you really might be starting you something you don't know. You could you guys, always go I'll blue show and you yellow. Build a car for it, <laughs> Dennis. Yeah. You can always go blue and yellow. Yeah. Classic. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going well, to go topic? blue and yellow? Might as well do it properly and go blue and pink and silver. And, no, you guys because are, we all know that we all know that pink is faster than yellow. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, just leave it in the parking lot at Electric Dreams. We got spray cans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, at Electric Dreams, uh, Marco brings it out every now and then. There's a little sign that he puts at the at the single parking store right outside the front door of the store, and it says, "This parking is reserved for you if your slot car and your and your full size car are the same car." So that's why I want to do that. <laughs> if you have when, a when you guys car, build bodies, <laughs> when you guys build bodies for racing, what do you use to protect them? Because I, I I used to use like future floor polish, yeah, but they don't sell it anymore. It's out of bit. They quit making it. So do you guys do something else? Um, I still got uh, half still a got bottle a gallon. of pledge. Yeah, that uh, I that I bought years back. And so I was gonna say I you used all yours. To find anything else. I did use all of mine from the old wow. days. Yeah. <laughs> I still got a bottle. I barely ever use it. <laughs> I use Halford's uh, clear clear coat. I, I just use to me a clear coat on mine. And it seems to hold up fine. Except it, if, if you're putting lane stickers on it, yeah. it doesn't work real well. Mm -hmm. So you either got to put a huge amount on the hood or put your lane sticker on the windshield. I've recently, yeah. recently acquired some uh, some uh, poly, excuse me, acrylic paints from a company called Mission Models, and they had this uh, clear coat. Sorry, it's a poly polyurethane clear coat, and supposedly that what they say in their videos, you don't need future anymore. You put this on it, put it on one time, and that's the end of it. So it's an airbrush kind of thing. What's it called again? I haven't used it yet. It's the company is Mission M I S S I O N Models Polyurethane Mix Additive, and you can use it just as a clear coat also. But the, it allows you to. It was I think designed for you to be able to put polyurethane in with your your uh, acrylic color paint and uh, toughen it up a lot. Yeah, hold on to it, Garth. It's probably worth like 200 bucks on Amazon right now. <laughs> this is only six months old. I don't know why you say that you can't buy it. I uh, messaged the company on... and they're, they've are they stopped making it. Yeah, you're so, kidding. No, no, they changed the name of it, I think. That's called Pledge now. That was years ago. Yeah. Yeah. But that yeah. pledge right there, Revive go on their it. Facebook group, on pledge their Facebook Revive messages, and they've said that they've stopped producing it for now. I don't know if that's who, just who of supply chains. The What's company that? makes it. 
I really? reached out to the company that makes it on their Facebook group and they got back to me and said, it's no longer available. We're sorry for it's any It's Johnson and Johnson. I mean, it's SCS. Yeah, I know. That's, no, it's SC Johnson. Johnson. Yeah, I know. SC Johnson. I, no. I, okay, I'll I'll get you guys the picture. I, I, I assure you. They've said they stopped making it. We never wow. had it in this country anyway, so can't help you there. <laughs> There's got to be old, a, old stock It's the same there. company that sponsored yeah, the the, the trick is just finding old stock, you know, before it it disappears and then another another option that i use are mr obby clear coat and there is there are the one in um there are several of them but some have like a large gray can and they said that is a kind of a uv has some kind of uv protection and that one basically will even block when you know or protect against like uh oil or any other stuff that uh, is a petrol base or whatever. So, and this should be kind of uh, readily available. I mean, it's in a spray can. You can spray directly from the can or you can spray through your airbrush if you kind of the thumb in it. It's pretty good. So nowadays that's what I use mainly as a kind of Yeah, finish. I've been trying a few different things like, that come in spray coats. Like I, I used to do the testers dull coat on dull stuff and then the gloss coat on and it just it doesn't hold up very well so i'll, I'll... no try these mr obby ones i mean because uh, i would be that? surprised uh maybe I, i'm gonna look for a link put it in the, the chat if, if you get yeah, a chance yeah yeah thank yeah, you yeah. and uh you know i use oil on the tires and touch my cars all the time and i don't see any kind of uh any issues uh kind of uh, happening so all right so uh anybody else want to bring anything up i thought alan had mentioned he had some things that he wanted to or, or did you already talk about them <laughs> i gotta go sorry okay no problem <laughs> see ya <laughs> have a good night next time. i got something i got something to say go ahead i'm gonna hold a six hour race at my track nice when by uh, yourself I <laughs> yeah, me, my, me, my you granddaughter, like you granddaughter. <laughs> you don't like have other people to be to be around. So, um, it's it's going to be in the twenty second and the twenty third of July. Um, I've already been in touch with Steve at True Speed, and he's he's we're organising it together. So, um, yeah, it's going to be an NSR Classic race, standard NSR classics, no three Ds, no altering anything just buy the car true to tires bring it along all the yellow and blue and... cars right <laughs> <Yeah. No. Damn. laughs> he doesn't want to lose his so car that's... to the blue and yellow he wants to he wants his car to be blue and yellow everybody yeah. else, yeah. else. <laughs> consider i got about 10 classic cars in blue and yellow then yeah it wouldn't be lost <laughs> but yeah so that that's um that's now being organized. So awesome. we'll let you know how it goes. I was going to say, make sure that, uh, you know, when when May and June roll around that you get some more, yeah, more information. Yeah, I will. Um, as I say, it's been hush-hush for a while. Um, and I got in touch with Steve today and he said, no, he's not doing anything on them dates because he's also doing the GT3 racing. So, um, yeah. So we bit the bullet and we set a date. <laughs> awesome. Good news. <clears throat> right, anybody else got anything they want to talk about, ask about, show, tell? <laughs> hey, Paul. Is John get okay? I noticed he's uh, been around a couple of Yeah, he's, he's been ill and busy and stuff. He, was, he, he sent me an email. He was hoping to be on today, but apparently he got sidetracked with other things. But yeah, he's doing okay. I also got an email from Alan uh, Lautenschlager, who's been on um, in, in the past, but he hasn't been on for a while. He's, you know, he's planning to come back at some point. So yeah. he's doing okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I thought somebody else was going to say something. <laughs> no, I was just going to say to Paul. <laughs> hey, Paul, check the yeah. check the chat. Check the check the chat, please. I sent you a private message. Oh yeah, what's this? I just want your email address. Just teasing you. <laughs> All 
All right. Well, well Dennis, I'm... have you have you had a lot of problems yeah. with the Palikar, um classics and uh, monopostos with the bevel gear yet? No, but then I haven't run them very much lately. Why? Um, because I got one that did that. What did it do? And uh, the only solution was to replace it with a standard gear uh, gear assembly, uh, you know, straight rather than beveled. Oh, so what strip? happened? Did the did the um, the pinion, the pinion spun on the shaft of the yeah. motor? Yeah. And um, there was no saving it. No matter what I did, it couldn't. It didn't work. I wondered if you have gotten the new, supposedly there's a new bevel pinion that was supposed to go on um, to remedy that. Okay. Uh, I haven't I haven't heard anything about it, but uh, I could check and find out. Um, okay. You know, I'm, uh, I'm curious because like I said, I had, a, I had to replace it with a straight pinion and uh -huh. a straight intermediate gear in order to get yeah. rid of the problem. Yeah. And of course yeah. a new motor because the shaft is um, neural. Yeah, then the motors with the bevel pinion on neural, yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you, you know, you could probably have filed the neurals motor. off and then press the, press the regular pinion on, but yeah. even yeah. so. So, yeah. good. and Dennis, putting those things together Thanks. are a real pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're, they're tiny, and, and of course, one of one side of the, uh, of a, the driven crown um just went bing you know and the floor monster grabbed it so i had to order <laughs> bushings for that you know it's one of those things it's like okay that will never be found again ever so oh, come uh, on. you know it's delays fixable. there but it did fix the problem um so you know it is fixable that way but it mm -hmm. would be nice to have it not be a problem going on mm -hmm. the the problem happened to uh, a couple of well, about a month ago now, when we last ran the F1s, um, during the middle of the race, the, the pinion just spun off. You know, the car got slower and then spun off, and it was the pinion uh -huh. that was causing the problem. So so we raced on Monday. Um, so that's kind of my club corner. <laughs> uh, we raced them on Monday. And, um, we, we did have we, a new class. We did uh, British touring cars, and, um, and that was kind of fun. You know, they were all scale electric and they actually really handled fairly well if you take the interiors out and change them to a card. I, I was really surprised. Um, they were doing, on my track, the, the track record is 7.2 and they were doing in the 8.3 second realm with just a standard motor on them. So, uh, and, and tiny, tiny wheels, of course, because I was using, we had the, the Honda and the M1 and the 330 uh, BMWs, BMW. mm -hmm. and uh, it, it worked out really well. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to put the videos up this afternoon and they're pretty nice and, little cars. Uh, so you can see them. Yeah, they're fun cars. But yeah, you know, it's it's kind of odd. You know, a lot of people are dissing scale electrics, but you know, there's a there's a lot of cars that they have that run fairly well. Yeah. Um, you know, with with very little fiddling. So it's 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 kind of sad because their bodies are absolutely gorgeous and many of them. Mm -hmm. So it, you know the yeah the chassis are there and all that and, and they're expensive now. Yeah. And Slot it's a better deal, but Slot it doesn't have a lot of the the fresh liveries of the GT3 cars and that kind of stuff. So you know I you, you when you were saying about the golden age of Slot cars is now that's true. I mean if you look at the older 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, even cars. They're, the detail is so much worse than what we have now. It's pretty amazing. And then when you add in 3D printing, my God, yeah. that's that's pretty amazing in many ways. So enjoy the golden age, guys. <laughs> we are. <laughs> All right, what you got, Jim? Um, I'm not sure if anybody's seen this. I just saw this just about an hour ago. We've I, I've seen the. Uh, the drawings from scale auto but this is the first time i've, I've seen the pictures of it oh, so this is from the toy fair oh wow so these are gonna uh, the, i think the porsche is, is scheduled for the first quarter and the other two fourth quarter the peugeot and the bmw but these are 
to, to me, this is going to be a game changer. We're going to have yeah. current LMP cars, whatever you want to call them, GTP, LMP, you know, cars that run at Le Mans and IMSA for the overall win. Uh, we're going to have real cars that are current. It's going to be spectacular. Oh, on that LM, Peugeot, LMDs on that Peugeot, and what's that open wheel? What, see, see uh, on the top of the Peugeot, it's got like an open for the air to go out. Like, yeah, that's typical of of, yeah. of this genre of cars now. They 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 okay. they, are, they are open wheel if you look from the top. Uh, the rules the rules S require that they are able to check the tread of the yeah. car of the wheel. So and the, the cars have been like that for quite a few years. All yeah. all the current cars from the last three or four years, you can see the tires from the top. Yeah. That, I, did, I didn't realize uh, that was the reason. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know if it's to check the, the tread because the BMW, all the, they're all running it's, slicks anyway. It's not the tread. It's just so that they could see any damage on the surface of the tire. Hmm. I so would this think it would be spectacular. Airflow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I believe that the actual stuff is also for the airflow in order to get the pressure out of the of the body of the car. Because you can see some similar stuff in the GT3 cars. SLC, if the rules are locked. Did any of you guys see Daytona? I just saw someone Another qualify. Next... Yeah, I, uh, I don't know if anybody anybody else saw it but the finish of the lmp2 class was 16 thousandths of a second after mm -hmm. 24 hours yeah just crazy <laughs> the last lap was a nascar race it was a it was a slingshot pass oh yeah over the start finish line yeah yeah it was pretty amazing all right garth so, you're yeah, these new cards are spectacular <laughs> yeah, i got I just one to share hold on i got uh Oh yeah, okay. Let me spotlight you. No, it's okay. You don't got a spotlight. I just say yeah, hold it came up. in. I don't want to I'll cover and I got my name on phone number on there. So yeah, it came in. I've already done some testing with it, figured out a few odd things on my own car. So nice. It's been well, that's cool. cool. Yeah. Yep. And uh Henry finally told me how much it cost to ship. <laughs> so, <laughs> he paid for shipping. Out. I'm paying for shipping. Yeah. I mean, I'm paying wow. it back, but he has a shipping company, so he didn't know what yeah. it would cost until he got the invoice. Wow. Anyways, we'll take care of that later. Garth, what you got? Um, I just got to tell for Paul, I wanted to tell him that my Sunoco 512 is at my local post office being delivered tomorrow. <laughs> I need to bug Alan because because I had a pre-order on that. Mine should be in the mail, but I haven't gotten a notification yet. <laughs> Mine, mine will be here still. Monday. Where'd you get yours I from? I haven't even got mine. I don't know when Pendle will uh, send mine. I got mine out. from LEB. Oh, well, okay. they, weren't, they were only supposed to be shipped on the 31st, right? So, yes, so we got mine from LEB. You've got one, though, Dennis. Street date was 31st, yeah. The release date was the 31st, which was yesterday. Yeah. Well, well we had 115 pre orders on this car. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, I, yeah, I've got one go. with Pendle. And one on order with top slot and trains. And Let's see which one you got. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a couple of them. Can't have more sold. than one, can you? <laughs> There's a couple being sold. A couple of places on eBay that are selling them. Oh, I'm sure. I, I don't think it's going to last for more than a couple of days, but that's Which car is that? I missed it. The, the 512. The Sunoco 512. Our, our hobby shop has them. Yeah. I mean, the have you got one yet, Greg? The distribution should have happened prior to yesterday, so that the shops had them to ship mm -hmm. starting mm -hmm. yesterday. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have one on pre-order since it was announced, but uh, I have not gotten a ship notification from Alan yet, so I'll have to bug him about that. But, <laughs> Sounds like some yeah, of you have it before me, which sucks, but oh well. <laughs> <laughs> I can't understand how come certain parts of the country well get them before we do, and we say, "How far are we from Spain?" Not that far. Yet you lot get them all before we do. It's coming from China, dude. <laughs> but you guys are in the UK. Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. And first off, the, none of, the, this Ferrari is not coming from Spain, right? It's, mm. it's coming from China or it's coming uh. direct from Italy. But uh, the other thing is that there are now agreed upon release dates, which are supposedly the same around the world. It's yeah. a fairly new thing that's coming in. And it's a 
to allow everybody to get the car at the same time. <clears throat> so that people like me aren't buying from Pendles. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, partly, and um, uh, partly to, to get rid of issues where uh, there are people with distribution rights and retail rights at the same time. Yeah. Uh, which is always hey, a Dennis? problem for other retailers. Yeah, the, the, retailer, the retailers aren't holding to those dates. Whenever they get them in, they put them on the shelf. Because they're bad boys. You know if they're yeah, going to make a yellow one say, I, I thought um, Gage Master was the main importer for this country for everything. And it went out to all the, all the, 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 the variable shops that dealt with them. I don't know how it works in the UK. Okay. That's perfectly perfectly reasonable thing to do. Mm -hmm. Garth, we might have an answer to that shortly because, as uh, as Jim pointed out, the Nuremberg Toy Fair is happening and Slot it. Mauricio is there, so if yeah. Slot is planning to release a, a yellow version anytime soon, they'll probably show it off. Was there a full Was there a full blown yellow version? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Turkel. They need to do. They need to do the after version. After the after the Sunoco car ran the twenty four hours, it was beat up, and they would sell a lot of them if they did that one. Yeah, that when I saw a photo of it was called it was the delivery was Tur T E R C H A L, and it yeah. was yellow with green stripes on it. So. Oh, okay. I'd definitely get one of those Daytona beaten up ones. Yeah. <laughs> There is a way I was just kit. looking at, um, been out for a while, at Googling so. <laughs> about those open fenders that uh, people were, that Jeremy was asking about. And uh, it was actually done to reduce the um, what they call aerial accidents after some of the cars were flipping over. Oh, yeah. So they had to have a particular, the cutout has to be 7.9 inches by 9.8 inches. And so, the, the, and it can't be, a, it, they can't be louvers. It has to be an open, a completely open area, so that it gets the it gets the air out from under the in the tire if the car's going sideways. There you oh, go. Yeah. Hey. Oh, yeah, with mm. duct tape all over Boom. it. Oh. Yeah. Sonoka duct tape <laughs> special. That that car oh, itself. Dennis, that's your colours: blue, silver, not pink, but yellow. <laughs> yeah, close. Well, close. <laughs> all right, Big Ben's got his hand up. What you got, Big Ben? Um, just re rewinding a little to Mo Mike's problem with his um, polycar gears. Um, for quite a while now, um, slotted slash polycar have, have uh, told us that there's going to be a new pod for those monoposto cars, which will take a flat six motor. Yeah. Now that's that's a um, yeah that's going to have a two millimeter shaft in it, obviously. And I'm just wondering whether those little gears that run on the with the um, FFO fifty motors are going to be capable of you know handling the power of the of the uh, the flat six, or whether they're going to have a complete new gear train or something. I don't recall, but uh, in the in the in Polycar's twenty twenty three generic Formula One car, it's, you're right, it's a flat six motor. So whether they've upgraded the all the gear train or not, I'm not sure. Certainly, they would have upgraded the pinion. Yeah. Yeah, and, and just to answer Paul's question about why, um, you know, the U.S. gets things quicker than England, the ship sails the other way around the world, Paul. <laughs> it's, it sails east, not west, so it's got to go all the way around to get to England. I think we piss China off. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, good thing Slotted's doing street dates now, so everybody will have the product in hand before it ships from anybody. <laughs> If they follow the rules, which retailers often don't, but you know, there you have it. All right, Dewan, what you got? Unless they get, unless they get stuck in the Suez Canal. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, that's the, okay. Yeah, that looks nice. How did that end the race? <laughs> Probably it's blue on it. Yeah, it needs blue. <laughs> All right, Dewan, what you got? I uh, I just had a question regarding some uh, sideways cars. I had a little anomaly occur while I was racing in the in the race a week and a half ago. Um, I guess they're known for having the uh, lead wires snap on them and the, and the guide. 
because uh, I guess they're soldered in. Is anyone else um, familiar with that? Is that the first thing you guys do is for maintenance is to, for these cars is to go ahead and uh, take the lead wires out of the, and um, take the soldered lead wires and, and have them uh, uh, put in. I don't remember mine having soldered leads. Yeah. Soldered. So I don't, the, end the, of the, the end of the wire is, is tinned, and then where they put the wires into the guide, that little really? piece is, is tinned with solder. And so the GT3 when car after car. they move a little bit, they break right there. Yeah. So was, the idea was... is to uh, cut that little piece off and strip a piece of wire that doesn't have any solder in it and put it back in and put the screw back in. I'm gonna have to double check my cars because I didn't know. About that. But yeah, if if that's the case, that you would certainly want to do that. Yeah, the GT3 cars don't have that. I was the other thing of... too is to is to rearrange the wires a little bit so that they so that they uh, they they oh, don't bend wrong. right at that spot. You want the wire yeah. to come straight out of the guide at the top and then curl right over the top of the post. And see if I can find a photograph of it. I did have one somewhere. I was I was on the verge of not finishing last until my my lead wire broke. Oh, well, the it, universe so, is trying to tell you something. I, <laughs> I mean, I ran my I ran my Group Five all series long, and I don't I don't remember ever doing anything to the to the guide wire. So I guess it hung on. I'll have to go check that. Yeah. I mean, this is a new car, a new release, so maybe they've changed something. I will not be surprised because I've seen since the first release of the GT3, for instance, they've changed the guide a couple of times. So, is, you know. Is, is the ones, is that an older of the Group 5? No, 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 no this is a new one. one. So yeah, that's is. why maybe we have, I mean, I'm not, uh, yeah, I've bought maybe some new uh, Group 5s, but I've not opened them up yet. Uh, so maybe they've changed the way in which they are doing stuff. Or someone is trained. tampering with your car, man. <laughs> Be careful the people that you race with. <laughs> I always change them out for the little um, ferals, uh, yeah. the, not the scallop ferals, because yeah, ferals. even the screws sometimes it, it, it'll, it'll break after a while. With the well, screwing. I mean, if you basically put the braids between the screws and the wire, it should not happen. Yeah. I never had any any issue with that. With that, if you do this, uh, the sequence of screw, braid, and then the wire. Yeah. And I hate those referrals because, man, I mean, they're so hard and mess up the, you know, the the braids when you put them in. Push. It's not that fine control. Yeah. That you can have with the screw. Later. Say <laughs> again. And they just come out later if if you know if it's. Ten times, yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, the one from uh, I mean I think the worst at the moment that the one from the Revo slot for the class for this is mini saloon and to push that bloody thing in it's so hard. Mm. At least it's an easy <laughs> fix one. Well, I mean, no, that? at least it's an easy fix. I mean, you still lose laps on race yeah. night, but you know you'll be back in business pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, that's the next race. Plus, I think I'll. <laughs> yeah, you... You you can blame the wise, uh, Dwayne. Yeah. <laughs> well. All right, we got fifteen minutes left. Anybody want to chatter, or should we just hit stop? Well, there was another question also on the same car, the, the um, sideways. The front the front wheels, there's no grub screws on those, are there? You have to actually um, pull them off. How do you how do you pull the plastic? Pull the yeah, they pull off oh, the yeah. same as a slotted car. Yeah, they just okay. pull right off. And it's not that they're, they're not. I didn't want to do it because I thought the might have been only NSR that is ruled, and you know, one or two others maybe. But generally, NSR are the only ones that give you uh, set screw wheels at the front. Yeah, if you don't see a set screw, yeah. then it's just press on. Yeah, everybody yeah. else just presses on plastic wheels. And, and those wheels are pretty good. No, yeah. they're not. No, so they yeah. go on a uh, kind of uh, normal okay. axle. Yeah, they're think, pretty good. Right. So just to be careful when you kind of. Uh, pull them apart. I usually oh. use those in my GT3 cars. I mean, the stock one that they come with, with the stock tires that I I true, glue and true. So pretty nice yeah. wheels. I think other than SCX, pretty much any car with a pod is going to have smooth axles that you can just pull the wheels off. 
you know, Skelextra, Carrera, Fly, Ninco, SCX, those are all going to be press on wheels, but, you know, sideways and, and slot it and all those kind of cars, those are going to be uh, smooth axles, pressed on, but smooth axles. So they just pull right off. Mm -hmm. No damage. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> That's uh, lots of questions. I got a lot of knowledge out of that. All right. Does I've anybody else have a question? I've got a question for Michael. There you go, Paul. Did you find that Aurora body yet? No, I did not. I'm still in the throes of trying to straighten the garage out after our remodel. So it's it's here. I just have to. I just want to see what it looks like underneath and the uh, back. I've got the chassis, original chassis from it, um, which is, I think it's aluminum. Yeah, it but is. it's, you know, it's it's just aluminum folded metal. It's not. Yeah. Uh, Dad's one is, um, I took it apart as a kid. <laughs> it didn't put it back together very well. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> that memory's burned in. Even the motor, because the motor's a round motor on it. Yeah. Yeah, I I will find it eventually. Uh, it is on my radar, but I've got so much stuff to go through and straighten out before that, and uh, yeah. been real busy. So I I will let you know. I'm scouring the Amer the US eBay at the moment, looking for looking for it, and can't find. Well, I haven't seen any on there. There's none on ours. So. Because I want a new chassis, and I might need to get a new body because this thing's chopped to pieces inside. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I Again. will. I will see what I have. It was driven and hard also, by. I, there's another GTO, but uh, a uh, Pontiac GTO body that was in there too, which is yeah, highly unusual. Yeah, no, that, that that's the. It was. A, it should be a red one, isn't it? Because it, it was someone selling them on eBay over here, and they went for ninety odd quid, three bodies and two chassis. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. The one I have is white. I'm pretty sure. I think both of the bodies are white. No, they, they, these were three red ones. So yeah, I will. I will see if I can find them. They're in one of the boxes somewhere that I've got. Unfortunately, I didn't leave them in the. the I've got the Aurora. The original Aurora box and and everything, um, and the track, um, but I don't have I don't have everything together. So I took them out with the intention, of like, oh, that's a cool body. It's the early Ford GT, which almost nobody yeah. has. That's you know, it. The you can't, you can't, and, you can't uh, match it with anything on the market at the moment because it, it's no. completely different. Yep, it is. Yeah. It's before I tried the... that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, oh, yeah, that looked good on it. No, it don't fit. Oh, that looked good on it. No, I'll that have to send fit. it to John Kidd and have one made for you. <laughs> I was just going to yeah. say, once you get one, send it to John. Yeah. yeah. I just want the back and the, 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 the front valance where the lights all sit in. Because yeah. the front valance is one separate part where oh, the light okay. pods are. And the back bit uh -huh. is just a panel on its own. So if I can get hold of those two bits or someone who can do a mold of those two bits, and that'd be ideal. I will, but, I will try and move it up on my uh, to-do list. That's no rush. It's no rush. I've still got plenty of other stuff to do. It's just one of my dad's cars I thought I'd like to uh, put back together before I got hold of it. Yeah. All right, okay. I've still got to find a chassis yet. Henry showed up. I, uh, do you, do you want to say anything about the Suzuka race, Henry? I just forgot the time today. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. We got 10 minutes. Tell us about Suzuka. Was, wasn't the waiting. He was, but he had to be quiet. Yeah, but he, was, was going to sleep. <laughs> he, he, he could feel the, everything uh, out. Uh, we, we heard from Alan, and we heard a little bit from Wayne, but then he got shut up. So we got 10 uh, minutes. Is. I want to hear from you. Um, it was uh, a very uh, interesting race, uh, and I think I'm, I'm getting how would I call it? Uh, getting ma matured in the digital racing this weekend. 
learn a lot of things again and uh, and do the, the next time the things different and uh, have more control of of your team uh, uh, don't let anybody uh, do it alone uh, building the cars because we had two LMPs that didn't drive mm -hmm. or not not good enough mm -hmm. and uh, we bought the, an LMP the same one as last year from uh, Tamar and uh, you have a handout motor so you build in the handout motor and uh, next time I'm I'm going to follow uh, if I'm connected with the dongle and then I'm going to check the speed on the h &E bench because uh, we didn't do it this time, but because you trust the system. But we had a lack, lack of speed of about 20%. So every uh, straight, I lose three, four meters. Wow. Um, is that the motor? There are handouts, they're flat six. Normally, they're pretty good, but I don't know why. And I sold uh, an HGB bench on Gary Skip, and I saw that he was doing with his controller, put him on car on, on the HD bench, and it drove five miles per hour. So there is something going on in the air, though, I think. So that, that's our, and maybe it's the the dongle for the, this time. We don't know, uh, uh, but I'm in a discussion group from uh, from all the guys uh, who, who drove in this in that class, and uh, now we see reporting a, a a lot of stuff, but what what with connections and and, and brake issues and connection issues, so. There could be everything wrong uh, in 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 that uh, in that race. Yeah, I mean it was an uh, test basically of of four point oxygen. It was a test. Yeah, and uh, and and uh, you, you knew you knew it on front, and uh, and it's it's a stress test with 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 sixteen uh, sixteen controllers. Uh, but knowing that everything is Bluetooth, and there are about fifty to seventy people that day in that room. With fifty or seventy telephones of mobile yeah, but, phones, uh, the Bluetooth you're not gonna use it for any of the transmission of the protocol, uh, Henry. The Bluetooth no? is only used. Uh, no, it's only used on the side for uh, for other things, right? I mean, when you put the car in the FU mode for moving uh, software or firmware or whatever, but not the main communication of the protocol. And and the but bandwidth, the, the bandwidth that you use from the controller to the dongle is. It should be basically so the wireless, uh, yeah, 2.4 gigahertz, whatever it should be. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Uh, we don't know yet. Um, uh, Mauricio is going to check a lot of things because they have a lot of data, of course. And hope. Uh, we hope the best for it. And, uh, and of course, uh, uh, it's trial. And it, it was a good uh, trust, uh, a stress test. So uh, nothing going to say about that. But well, there are things. <laughs> Where did you end up? I can at? say, I can say that basically when uh, this was, uh, I think, 2016, 2017. So they, that's a kind of release of the 3.16 firmware. Yeah. Yeah. So we had uh, Suzuka. So we all update or we update uh, Gary and I on that kind of firmware. And we had uh, like a similar kind of issues like cars uh, that uh, went into ghost mode and driving itself. Uh, no brakes. Or sometimes the car was just launching itself. So in the in the main straight, you know, when there is yeah. a when there is a pit lane yeah. uh, in front of the restroom, car yeah. not stopping and went off the track into the floor. I still have the scratches on that uh, on that car. <laughs> then there was a couple of releases later. And then we went back the following year, same car, same chip, and the car was going pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wireless is weird. Well, I mean, firmware is weird, right? I mean, depending on what they are messing around with. And and one of the things that I don't like, uh, you know, they're releasing new new version of the firmware, but never there is a, like uh, uh, a change logs or what's happening. Because sometimes, I mean, if I have a minor thing, right? I mean, it's like a menu to compare to the rest. Why should I update the firmware? So before I was always like, oh, yeah, I'm going to raise, I want the latest and and uh, in firmware, right? But maybe it's not the best thing when you're going to do an event so far away. 
But in this case, I don't think you guys had the choice. I mean, you were all guinea pigs, as Mauricio said. So nothing. And, and you also pay for it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, I really thank you all because you guys, you know, were the guinea pigs and we are going to get to the benefit of it. So good. Exactly. Yeah. Craig, it, it, it's uh, for me, it's, it's uh, um, nah, not an expensive trip. Uh, I, I've been two days in a hotel, etc. But if you come from from, from abroad, uh, you go from London and you have a lousy a lousy uh, game because yeah, of the soft. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I don't think you like that. No, that's true. That's true. Um, uh, and the first uh, race of Saturday, uh, we drove the GT. Now we had an, uh, an uh, did not finish because the chip burned. And uh, yeah, that's also. Do you something... know why? Uh, no. Uh, yeah, I think that's yeah. We should we basically saw... do some post mortem there, you know, to avoid the issues. Yeah. In the future. Yeah, yeah. and uh, uh, and and just what I was saying, uh, twenty percent loss in your in your power. I, I I cannot really say that that is true because I cannot uh, 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 control that. But uh, yeah, we had a, le a lack of speed, and uh, yeah, if you lose every round two or three meters, you're not competing. So it yeah, was there a, are two a... two things there. One could be that you got a, like a duff motor, and the other one could be that there was some kind of weird settings in your uh, chip controller. Correct. Maybe yeah, chip. I mean, now that they, and this is why I hate this stuff that you have to put, uh, you know, extra. <clears throat> kind of controls or functionality on the film where like setting the top brakes, top speed, the top bullshit. I mean, basically you should not have anything on the film where everything should be controlled by the controller. So it might be the case that you got, I don't know. I mean, that's something that I think, again, do some post-mortem, check what, uh, take the motor out and measure the RPMs mm -hmm. of the motor, you know, to see I whether you have some. I gave the car back to Tamar and I uh, uh, asked him, and I, and I asked on Tamar, Will you check the motor? Uh, yeah, we, he will not because he's so freaking busy with all kind of messy other stuff that he has in his life, right? I mean, I don't yeah. think that he's gonna. You he should have taken. So that motor is lost in the black hole that is Tamar bench. <laughs> yeah. but, but I know for the next time I will test my car on my own bench yeah. with control on the firmware, and then I know the speed when it was at home, and I know what the driving speed I have in in the race. Oh. So th th those are the things I learned about it um, uh, and prepare better because uh, <laughs> we drove the G25s and you have two kinds of G25s, small and, and wider. And uh, we get this time the large uh, tires and our car didn't drive with that. Uh, they, they came off the, the rims, uh, uh, the behavior was different and in the training the car was fabulous. but. The different kind of tire, it it ruined also our GTRs. But okay, uh, that's our own fault because we didn't read that in the specs uh, of the, of the <laughs> rules. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we tried G25 and that's it, and not the other uh, type of uh, kind of uh, of tire. So there are a few things for next time, and uh, it was we had as team a lot of fun. Uh, 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 for me, it was the first time of the third time that I drove uh, Suzuka. And I know now Suzuka, I know very good how to lane change. And it was the first time that I had the actual speed to uh, catch up on people. And that's a different story than driving the lanes. Now you have to decide, okay, this car I'm quicker than, and then I have to go to the left, go to the right, etc., etc. So, um, uh, when you are quicker uh, as uh, somebody else, it's a different race. So also that is a learning aspect for us. This is, uh, for me this weekend. And uh, I've said it before, but they did it uh, uh, this time again. Not as team. I have to have a third light in my cockpit because it was terrible in that hour of darkness. Yeah. Yeah, and you're you need to have a something. You said five cars go under the bridge. You don't. You don't know which one is yours when they come out. <laughs> You've seen the movie. Yeah. You're saying you, you're standing on the roster. It's about, and we are uh, totally on the left side. So it's it's possibly twenty meters from that space. We go five uh, cars under the bridge, and which one is yours when it comes out? You never know. Yeah. 
And then the cars coming uh, uh, to, the, to the, the farthest point, you see the back lights. Then you make the turn back and you see five lights again upcoming. Or no, you see 10 lights upcoming from five cars. And then you're playing with your controller a little bit. So, oh, I break, I, I go faster, I go break. Yes, that's mine. And I had three times that I've looked at my controller. I am on the track. I am seeing the light beeping on my control. Where the hell is my car? Um, yeah, it's off the track now. And where it is. Well, I mean, that, yeah. yeah. Why? I don't why even, do I don't. I don't even look at the controller when I'm racing my own truck. And I can basically race on that truck almost without looking at the car. So imagine yeah. doing this in a car. I mean, basically, yeah, I don't know. I mean, one of the things that I do, if, if I use someone's controller or, you know, in team racing, I set up the controller before I take the car out from the pit. And then that's it. I mean, you don't gonna mess around with the, with your control, unless you can do it without uh, losing sight of your car. So you can yes, not look, basically look at your controller going when no, there are I basically look only on my 15 cars. If, if my car is lost, I look at my controller. If I have still control, uh, 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 if yeah. I'm still on a track, I yeah. can see that. And that's the only way, <laughs> uh, moment that I, I'm looking at my controller because I don't need to look at my controller, of course. But that's also a thing that I have to do. Uh, we have to do uh, better next time. And, uh, but it's it's a it's a, it's a wonderful event. Um, uh, it's so oh, so nice to see so many cars on the track. Uh, you met so many people. Uh, uh, you have so many uh, discussions. Yeah, uh, it wasn't not a successful weekend, but well, a lovely weekend. All right, and on that note, I'm going to hit the stop button. And everybody wave bye for next week. See ya.